In this video, we're gonna talk about a very important concept called board texture because it plays a very important role in post-flop play. So what is board texture? Well, it's the suitedness and the connectedness of the community cards. So we're talking about the cards that are on the flop, the turn in the river. And there's two types of board textures that we need to know about and we need to understand. There are dry boards and there are wet boards. So what is a dry board? A dry board is where the flop of the three cards that come down on the board, that's the community cards. That's when the flop is very unconnected and it's multi-suited, meaning there's multiple suits on the board, such as one card's a diamond, one's a club, and one's a spade. And the main point behind it, it's when there are very little draws that can hit their turn on the river. On the flip side, there are wet boards. And the wet board is exactly the opposite. So wet board is when the flop is very suited, very coordinated, and very connected, where tons of draws can hit easily on the turn of the river. So let's do some examples to really highlight this and show you what I'm talking about. So let's talk about dry boards first. Here's a couple examples. Example one, this is a very dry board. It's probably about as dry as it gets. King of clubs, eight of hearts, two of diamonds. So looking at this, what draws can really call on the flop if we bet the flop and expect to hit a draw on the turn? Let's think about straights and flushes. Is there a flush draw? There are no flush draws that can hit on the turn. What about straight draw? There's no straight draws either. So this is a very dry flop here. If you bet the flop with a pair of kings, the only thing that's really ever going to call you is probably something like a pair of nines through a pair of queens or a pair of kings as well. Anything else is probably going to fold. So this is a very dry board. Another example is three of hearts, seven of spades, and queen of diamonds. So looking at example two, what type of draws can call to try to hit on the turn? Well, there's a few. There's four, five, five, six, and four, six, and all of them are going for a gut shot straight draw where each one only has four outs. So with the four, five, they're drawing to four sixes. With the five, six, they're drawing to four fours. And with the four, six, they're drawing to four fives. And so they're all only drawing to four outs to hit their made hand, meaning the nut straight, on the turn. And with four outs, that's really only about 8% equity. So even with that, it's super dry with the gut shot straight draw. That it's really difficult for them to hit their gut shot on the turn. Now, are there any other draws? Well, there's no plus draw. And there's really no other straight draw that can hit on the turn. So these are both very dry boards. And when we have a dry board, it plays a huge role in if determining if we should continuation bet and how much we should continuation bet. And we'll talk about that further in this lecture and in our next lecture. So now let's talk about wet boards. So here's an example of a couple really wet boards. We have ace of spades, ten of spades, jack of hearts. Now let's talk about what hands already got there. Queen, king already gives you the nut straight. So... That already got there if anybody has queen king. Now let's talk about flush draws. Well, there's numerous flush draws since there's two spades on the board. Anybody that has two spades in their whole cards, that's gonna give them flush on the turn of the river. And then there's numerous straight draws. So eight, nine will give you the bottom end of the straight with a queen. Any queen X hand or any king X hand is gonna have a gut shot straight draw. And then of course, ace king as well is going to have the gut shot straight draw. So there's tons of cards that can be behind where potential on the turn they can easily suck out with a board like this because there's a flush draw and there's numerous straight draws. So pretty much, you know, any Broadway card that hits, so queen or king hits on the turn, almost guaranteed somebody hit the straight. And then any spade that hits the turn of the river, it's guaranteed somebody probably hits the flush. Now let's look at pretty much the ultimate of what boards. Five of hearts, six of hearts, seven of hearts. So three cards that are coordinated in a row and they're all the same suit. This is about as wet as it gets. And if you flop something like top set on a board like this, it's not that fun of a hand to play, at, play in, especially if you're playing multi-ways. I've actually had a flop, a set of, a flop to set of aces on a board texture like this, but it was all the same suit. And I ended up folding by the river. 
and I think it was a correct fold, and I remember it was a correct fold because my opponent ended up flopping the nut straight. So it was a good fold. You'll find yourself making a lot of big hero call folds when people catch up and hit their draws on wet boards. Um, but anyways, let's get back down to example two. So five of hearts, six of hearts, seven hearts. Let's talk about what's already there. Well, the flush is already there, so anybody that has two hearts, they already have the flush. What about the straight? Well, there's numerous straights. We have the bottom end, which is three, four, for the bottom end of the straight. And we have eight, nine for the top end of the straight. So two straights are there, and there's numerous flushes with anybody that has two hearts. Now let's talk about the draws. Well, anybody that has one heart, they're drawing to a flush on the turn. So that's lots of combination of the hands. And then anybody that has a 3x for a gut shot straight on the bottom end, that's a straight draw. Anybody that has 4x, it's going to give them an up-down straight draw for an open-ended straight draw. So that's a straight draw. Anybody that has 8x is going to give them an open-ended straight draw as well. And anybody that has 9x is going to have a gut shot straight draw. So there's tons of hands that are already there. And there's tons of hands that can draw out on a board like this. So now let's do a bit of a primer on the role that board texture plays in getting value and protecting your best hands. So let's assume that you have the best hand you're playing in a pot on the flop and you are playing against your three opponents. So on a drive board in general, if you have the best hand, like for example, our king eight deuce board, um, there's not many, if any, drawing hands that can call any flop bets to try to catch them on the turn. So we're less worried about betting more to protect our hand from getting sucked out on and to ensure we get a lot of value from drawing hands, simply because there aren't really many drawing hands, if any, that can call us. Now on the flip side, when we talk about wet boards, there are tons of worse hands that can call us and suck out, us, out on us on either the turn or the river. So we are more inclined to bet more for both value to ensure we get max value from our hands so, and to also protect our hand to prevent people from sucking out on us. So that's a bit of a primer. We're going to talk more about this and how board texture plays a role in continuation betting and also calling a continuation bet. So that's going to go ahead and conclude this lecture. If you have any questions about board texture, please let me know. As usual, always happy to help. If not, thanks for watching and this we'll see you in the next video. This is a part of our Crush Microstakes online poker course, The Complete Mastery Guide. If you like this course, go ahead and click this link here where you can get this course for 50% off via our special YouTube video using our coupon code YouTube and you'll get enrolled in this course for only $6. Thanks for watching and hope to see you over at Microgrinder Poker School.